Okay, Thomas, let me show you what I did to work on this box for you. So let's go back to the Crazy Egg site, uh, Neil Patel's site, and let's see what he's got. So he's got his, his box here, and uh, we'll just see what happens as we pull back and forth on the screen. It moves relative to the background image, and... Um, it's really about it. We had a gradient on the background. So let me see, let me show you how I put this together inside of ClickFunnels. So let me just go to the result and here it is. Obviously I didn't put in the text. You just get the idea of what it's supposed to look like. And we'll uh, scrub back and forth and you can see the background image moves in, moves as we go back and forth. And this pretty much stays still just like on the crazy egg site. So let's go into the editor itself. And so the first thing I did is I took that background image and I dumped it into the background on the site and made it uh, fill 100% width. And that way it'll stay full width the whole time. And you see down here that obviously there's, um, it moves up and down. So you'd have to drop in a background that was similar to this or something to compensate for that. You may also have to resize that background image in order to get it to work properly. But again, you're just doing this to learn how to work within ClickFunnels. So now on this, what I did is you probably, if I recall, I think you had like a full, full width section. I just came in and I made a very small section and um, extra small section, in fact, is what they call it. In order to bring it down a ways from the top, I put in 400 pixels at the top. And then you got, of course, some top and bottom padding. And uh, here's really a crucial one, though, the left and right padding. So it pulls those two input boxes away from the edges. And I found that about 25 seemed to be about the same as what was on the other site. So let's see, I don't think I had anything in advance. Okay, well, 10, 10 corner radius, and that was it. And there is, like I said, a, a radiant in, a gradient, I mean, in the background here. Uh, but we'll get to that when we get into the CSS. Otherwise, I dropped in a headline element. And I don't think there was anything special about that headline element. No, there wasn't. And then another headline element down here, which I shrunk down just again so it would look like the one on Crazy Egg. So now we have here in the middle. Okay, let's let's go back through this again. So up here at the top, there's this is a row. So we have a section here. Then we have a row. And inside the row, we have the headline. At the bottom, same thing. We have a row, a single column row with a headline. And then in the middle, we have a two column row that I have split right down the middle. On the left hand side, I have an email input element. And on the right hand side, I have a button. So let's just click on this email element. I don't think I did anything special in here either. Let me see. Let's look at advanced. Oh, I know what I did. I went into themes and I came down and I clicked on basic input. And then once I did that, then I came in and I turned off, I told it to square up the edges because as soon as I put in that basic input, it gave me rounded corners all the way around and we don't want them on all four corners, just on two. And so I had to come back in and clean that up by telling it we wanted square corners. And then the same thing on the, on the button. Oops, let's go into the button. Come on. And in the button, oh, here I had to put in negative one top margin because it was sitting down a little bit low. So I put in a negative one top margin and popped it back up. And otherwise, I just changed the background color a little bit just to, to set it off. And, uh, oh, full width. I had to set this to full width from fluid just so it would take up the um, full amount of space there. If we go back to fluid, see it's, it's small. So we go full width, display box, style custom. Otherwise, I don't think there was anything else in here. Oh, I put in this arrow. That was it. I may have changed the horizontal and vertical spacing a little bit, but you'll know as soon as you see yours. And it's got one pixel border around it with a little bit of an inset, which I think was the, um, the way it was set to begin with. So that's it as far as setting this up. The uh, big trick comes in with just a little bit of CSS. So we'll come in here. 
and we got our what I'm calling here button turned. No, not that one here. Uh, button or blue input box. That's what I call this. So the container, so the entire section we put in that gradient and we put important at the end. If not, it won't work. And what I did here is I did a margin left of 22%. This is something I actually just learned by accident by doing this is I thought I was going to have to put in a negative left margin and then I accidentally put in a positive margin of like 200 pixels and it moved it over and then I thought well why not just try a percentage and so then by putting in that percentage it's always going to be 22 percent of the width of the entire viewport 22% off of the left edge. And so that actually works really slick. And I'm glad I learned that today. So then we have our input button and we have our button to submit. And all this is here is just says what the border radius should be. So the input button right here on the left, it says it always starts uh, counterclockwise from the top left corner. So it's 5% top left and then zero, zero on the right hand side and then 5% bottom left. And then the uh, button, the input button is the exact opposite because it's zero on the top left and five on both of the right hand side. And then again, back to zero on the bottom left. So that is it. If you do those few little fixes there and your biggest thing is you needed to make this a section and then just put a couple rows inside of the section. And then that was really the biggest trick that you missed. Otherwise, as you can see, as we move across, it stays exactly in the same place as we scroll and as the viewport size changes. So, got any questions? Reach out to me.